So, grab that Twinkie. Oh, I love Twinkies. Somebody has to buy the hostess name and bring back Twinkies. But to talk about all that good stuff, the author of Fat Lash, Karen Kaline, thank you for being here. It's good to be now, with you, John. I've known you for, for, for a long, long time, but yes. I had no idea you were a beauty queen. <laughs> See, see what you don't know I about had people. No idea. It's, it's a wonder. I probably so you write a, you write a book about being a childhood yeah. beauty queen. What is what yes. does that mean? Well, my mother put me on the stage when I was three years old, and there were only a few pageants. So I was in pageants when I was seven, eight, and nine in Denver, the Little Miss pageant. So you live the whole Jean <laughs> Benet world. I, I would say I did. Really? I would say that I did. Did you yes. enjoy that? Well. It took me until my 30s to discover what I really felt about it. Because you see- And when you loved it. You loved it, right? Yeah, yeah mm, mm. Mm -mm. no. And you see, I'm, I'm a natural extrovert. You can tell I'm really shy, right? And yet, children at, at young ages, they want to please their mom. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to please my mom. And, and I thought I loved it. And it took me until at least 20 or 25 years later before I really understood how, I'd, how I Your felt about it. Your mom was also a Jean Benet, wasn't she? Well, she was a childhood beauty pageant contestant as well. Um, not a child beauty pageant. They didn't have them back oh, really? then. Because you see, now we have this thing that's exploding with toddlers and tiaras and honey boo boo and all of that. <clears throat> it's really indicative, endemic to the culture. But when my mom, when I was in child beauty pageants in the 60s, they were just starting, my mother was supposed to be the next Shirley Temple. <laughs> ah. And there's a picture in the book of my mother doing the splits, circa 1931. And there's a picture that is a picture of me doing the splits. You're and cute. So, you were very cute. Oh, All right. You. So, what's what but, was what was the problem? Why, if moms want to get their kids involved in 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 mm -hmm. looking good and looking sweet, mm -hmm. why was that a problem? Why did it take you to your 30s to get a handle on it? Well, because. This is sexualizing little girls. And this is why I wrote the book, is hopefully so that people will know what it feels like and maybe we won't have another generation of girls that has to write a book like Fat Lash. This is sexualizing children. And um, Martina Cartwright, who wrote the foreword in my book, coined a phrase, and she writes about it in my book, called Princess by Proxy. Stage moms. That's right. And Stage moms. Parents who live through their children, and in fact, children really aren't there. They're really not there because this is the mother, uh, usually mothers. Yeah, I, I can't. Remember. That's why it's stage moms. <coughs> stage stage dads are, are are getting drunk. There's no. There's no but, <laughs> but you but, have soccer right. dads but what about and that kind of thing. The fat lash part. This is a book about yes. eating. Yes. I, Connect those two for me. Those are connected. Now, they're not always connected in everybody's story. They're two separate issues, but they're intricately uh, connected because what you have is a parent who's appearance obsessed and weight obsessed and food obsessed. My mother put me on starvation diets. I think you could call them starvation diets. They were 500 calorie a day diets. You're Jewish. There's no <laughs> Jewish moms do not put their kids on diets. They My do if they're if they're suffering from princess by proxy. I see. <laughs> and they do if appearance is really, really important. There's a woman who did an article for Vogue, her name is Daryl Lynn Weiss, who was quite proud of the fact that she had put her child on diets. And what you don't real what, what people don't realize sometimes is that this need to display display and show off their children, um, and, and when you are um, restricted, when your food is restricted, it's, it's logical that you're going to have a backlash to that. I mean, I made it my business to let me, steal food. Let me, let me put out an analogy, because this is yeah. what I truly believe on, on alcohol. As mm -hmm. we keep putting alcohol at a higher and higher shelf for kids to get to, mm -hmm. and we have the 18-year-old drinking laws, now it's 21, now we have the, the Nazis out there who go mm -hmm. around and make sure that no restaurant could accidentally serve anybody, that when kids finally get hold of the product, they go nuts, that's and that's right. why every couple of years up in Boulder, you see some kid who actually uh, kills himself with alcohol poisoning, mm -hmm. whereas in Europe, when you're raised with a glass of wine, it that's doesn't, right. you, it, they don't understand that. You're saying, does the same thing hold with food for little kids yes. that when you withhold it because there's a picture of you here in high school you look a little different than you did as, as, yes. as a little girl yeah how so 
Um, well, I when I was 16, I weighed 285 pounds. Wow. And so I made sure there would not be any more beauty pageants. <laughs> Unconsciously, mind you. 280 but, pounds? Yeah, 285 pounds. Wow. Yes, That's a long was. way from being a Jean Benet to 285 That's pounds. Right. And you did that really as... And, as a fat lash, I get it. The book, that's Got right. It, it all and works. Now. And it's a complex issue because this happens for women as well. When they don't want to be sexualized, they can put on a lot of weight to protect themselves. Obesity is protection, and it's a mistake to think. You know, right now there are black markets going on um, for chocolate syrup in places where they've banned chocolate syrup and they've banned junk food. Like where? Oh, in it's California. In a lot of places. So what you have are people who would not ordinarily have a weight problem, but when you put something off limits, people are going to make it their business to get it. Boulder, uh, one of the uh, Fairview High School, there was a ring of guys who would go to Costco, buy candy mm. bars, and then sell them in school because they took them out of the out of the candy machines, and they were making a fortune off of it. Yeah, and brilliant. It, and and the thing is, is that what what really we need to teach parents and the culture in general, if I could be so bold, is self-regulation. Freedom is the key because eventually people are going to have to learn how to self-regulate and to own their own body. It's about body integrity and body ownership. And when you're either depending on or rebelling against someone who's controlling your intake, and we could have a whole other discussion about whether that's right or wrong, and I don't think it's right. What you have is a fat lash. What you have is people doing the exact opposite just to get back at you, because that's not something that anybody should have control over how another. You, how did you go from 285 pounds in high school as a reaction to what your mom forced you into as a mm. beauty contestant to, to where you are now? How long did it take mm. for you to get your head around that, to lose the weight and, and, and bring yourself to you could act, so you could actually chronicle it in a book? Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> actually, a lot of therapy. I mean, I, I'm an MSW from Columbia and I'm very, very self-analytical. And so this book talks a little bit about, it tries to illustrate, I, I guess you could say I use myself as a guinea pig because I know my story better than anyone else's. And I use my story simply to illustrate these basic principles of obesity as protection, um, fat lash, uh, fear of thin, where women actually become afraid of being thin because the things that they remember when they were thin are so painful that they really don't want to recall that. And this book talks only about about six years of my life in which um, I was having some rather dramatic experiences as a result of, of some of the things that I had experienced as a child. So the, 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 I gave you the long answer, but the short answer is, Lots of therapy. Lots of therapy. <laughs> right. I want to bring it to politics for a second because we're now uh -oh. getting we're getting now to the nanny state mm. of you know alcohols pushed pushed up. On one level, we're we're legalizing pot here so people can consume what they want mm -hmm. when it comes to recreational marijuana. But at the same time, we have this push for the mayor Bloomberg. Let's outlaw big mm. sugary drinks. Let's mm -hmm. have a tax on um, on fats and trans fats. And we're, let's let's do the same thing here in Colorado. Fast food restaurants need to post all their information now. Other restaurants are going to soon have to follow, which is a difficult thing to do when you're not doing something in mm -hmm. mass that has a consistency. And we're we're forcing nannyism on on onto people. Is there a backlash to that as well? Without a doubt. That's well, another reason I wrote the book. Well, because when you put something, we've we've discussed it. When you put something off limits to people, they're gonna, it's going to become much more uh, attractive. But beyond that, uh, it's, it's astounding to me that I grew up to watch a culture make all the same, a lot of the same mistakes my mother did. Uh, you have That's an interesting restriction parallel. diets, basically, basically. So, so and you Mayor, have beauty pageants. Mayor Bloomberg and, <laughs> and your princess by proxy mom yes. have uh, the, same, the same thing. They want you to be healthy. They want you That's to right. look good. That's they want right. you to be thin. And yeah. so they're both going to put you on a diet mm -hmm. for your own damn good. That's right. And you should know that one of the aspects of Princess by Proxy is that really the truth of that clinically is that the child is neglected. It, you may think that they're smothering the child, but in fact the child is not there. 
So how do you mean they're not there? I mean, well, because, because when you're doing your hair, you're doing your makeup, you're getting yeah. a tiara. You're they're just an object. You're really not there because children have to go through developmental stages in order to get to a healthy adulthood. What we have are a lot of children, a lot of parents who didn't really develop, didn't really um, um, get to a point of adulthood and they're living, re trying to grab their childhood back from their children. I didn't say it very well, but what I'm, I'm trying to say is that's part of the reason why, for example, my mother lived through me, because the same thing was done to her. So what you have is a generational issue. And to bring it back to a, a Mayor Bloomberg, you have someone who is a self-appointed food cop who thinks that they can actually control and manipulate what other people eat. Granted, he's not even a nutritionist, because you know a nutritionist would be smart enough not to do this. Talk to the eating disorder community, and they will tell you the smartest people in eating disorders would never do that, because they're working on the opposite side of there, things, trying to help people gain back their control. It seems as though the nanny state wants to control us through the supply side. If if we yeah. get rid of cigarettes and make them really expensive, we get booze and make it really expensive. If we outlaw yeah. trans fat, you know, the, there's no place in Colorado where you can have a beer and uh -huh. a cigarette and enjoy a steak. You know, then yeah. then everybody will be forced to be healthy instead of doing the thing that I think most people would do, converse with people, have a dialogue, and try to convince people of your point of view instead of compelling them and coercing them. Well, um, the only time a person, child, adult, or anything else adult ever loses weight, just to bring it back to weight, is when they own their own choices and own their own body. Trust they me. cannot be Trust forced. Me this, I'm, <laughs> I'm still a victim. I want to make it. Karen, thank you so much. The book, pleasure. Fash, Fat Lash. You get it at Amazon or any other good place or website as well, fatlash.com. I'm John Caldera. Join me next time right here on Colorado Public Television. Listen for me late nights on KHOW, Sundays particularly. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute. We'll see you next week.